My name is Lisa Griebel, and um, I really am honored to be with you today as a sarcoma survivor. And um, I, I listen to the stories about you know, people like Julian or Karen Wyckoff, and you know, it just, these people are unbelievable and they are amazing human beings. And I, I just can't say enough how we need people like you to pay attention to this horrible and devastating disease. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, my story is short and sweet and includes the numbers 8, 3, 2, 50, and 21. Hmm, curious, eh? Let me explain. So when I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you about today to, to tell this story, it occurred to me that it was eight years ago this week that I started my third week of radiation therapy. Um, and, and that was uh, as a result of orders from Dr. Jinso Cho, who was referred to me by Dr. Ed Chang. So on February 7th, 2006, I had a follow-up visit with Dr. Chang to uh, review the results of the, the pathology from a surgical biopsy that he had done on me a, a couple of weeks before. And I just so vividly remember sitting in the examination room and um, you know sitting on the table with a, a, a couple of medical students and, and kind of bantering back and forth when Dr. Chang introduced two new vocabulary words to me, malignant fibrosarcoma. And at the time, I, I remember losing my hearing because anything that he said after those words came out of his mouth was kind of like a wah, 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 I heard nothing. And I also remember um, seeing, watching the book almost in slow motion fall off my lap and having papers just flying around the room. It was just, it was shocking and, and it was stunning. But my, um, the, <laughs> the real thing that went through my head is that I kept thinking, you know, this really isn't the surprise I was hoping for on my 50th birthday. Thanks so much, Dr. Chang. <laughs> But this, uh, the sarcoma journey for me really started a few months earlier, back in November of 2005, when I was um, having my uh, uh, routine, regularly scheduled emergency haircut, because I was um, uh, there with my hairdresser, Jan, and we were having this, this conversation about our na my neighbor who had just been diagnosed with breast cancer and kidney cancer. So we were in the midst of having this conversation and Jan stops and says, you know, it's gotten bigger. And she was referring to the lump that I had on the back of my neck. And I said, yeah, I know. I'm, I have made it one of my um, New Year's resolutions to have this checked out. And uh, so I um, uh, had gone through about five years of asking doctors periodically whenever I went in for an exam for anything, you know, to take a look at this lump on the back of my neck. And repeatedly they just kept saying, ah, oh, it's nothing to worry about, it's a fatty tumor, no cause for alarm, except that it started to get bigger, which is one of the signs of sarcoma cancer. So um, I met with about three different doctors before I got to Dr. Chang. And thankfully, he ordered a surgical biopsy. And so after I finished all of the, the rounds of, of radiation and had a couple of more surgeries, I consider May 21st as being the day that I started my um, sarcoma survivor. And so what I am most grateful for is the fact that I was in the right place. I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the right time, 2006, working with absolutely 
the right medical team of people here at the University of Minnesota. And so as you start talking to people who are uh, sarcoma patients or sarcoma survivors, I think what you're going to discover is that they all bring their own story of, of diagnosis and treatment. And it's very unique. But you are going to hear some common themes. And we heard it in, in the story about Julian. And we hear it in the story about Karen. Because these people show up with a lot of fear and anxiety, while at the same time, they bring with them incredible courage and resilience and, and humor in Julian's case. But the other, what I think is, is kind of a, um, an unfortunate common theme that we hear is, is the theme around um, how long, the length of time that it takes for these sarcomas to get diagnosed is very long. And Pete said on average it's about 14 months, which is just an incredibly long time. Or you hear the common theme of the misdiagnosis and, and um, treatment of these. Sarcoma is an insidious disease that invades and disrupts people's lives in a despicable way, and it absolutely must be stopped. And so the, the very fact that you're here today is, is so incredibly important to us, and it's so valuable. Because just by increasing your level of awareness about what this disease is, gives us reason to hope. And, and being aware of what are those um, signs and, and signals of sarcoma so that you can pass it on to the, to the next doctor is really important. So I'm gonna leave you today with a quote that has almost become my mantra since being diagnosed with sarcoma, but also um, since working with the Karen Wyckoff Raven Sarcoma Foundation. And it comes from Margaret Mead and she says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So my invitation to you is to help us change the world and eliminate the word sarcoma from our vocabulary. Thank you for being here and good luck to you. Thank you.